Hello and welcome to another video from fantasyfootballscout.co.uk. Uh, today I'm chatting to David about the best captaincy options for game week six. Uh, David, welcome. Hi. Yeah, been a bit of a horror show game week five, so it's nice to look to a different game week and uh, we go again. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yes, now the first person we're going to chat about is someone who didn't have uh, a great game week five, but we think he could have a good game week six. Uh, certain Mo Salah there. Um, yeah, talk to us about him. Yeah, I'm, it's so frustrating Mo Salah because um, obviously I kept him for game week five, and as a lot of people did. And um, based on a lot of his underlying numbers, I think we can all say that he, as an individual, we have talked about luck and skill on the scoutcast, but he, as an individual, is very unfortunate not to get some returns uh, against Spurs. I thought uh, had lots of chances, created lots of chances, and. Um, yeah, looking forward to a home game against Southampton. If he's going to play in that game, then you have to consider him because, I mean, he's still just, he's doing so well in a lot of the underlying numbers. So he's top for ten penalty box touches. He's second for shots on target. He's top for shots in the box. Uh, he's top for chances created. So the balance between, like, he seems to have like picked up a more, even more creative role than he had last year while still um, shooting a lot of the time. So when you combine that goal threat and distribution together, um, as, as you were just mentioning to me before we started recording, uh, Joe, he's to he's very much top of goals imminent, right? He is, yeah. So I've got my goals imminent table, fired it up, and uh, there he is. I mean, he's not just top, he's very, very top. He's uh, 19 goal attempts, as you're saying, you know, he's got great underlying stats there. But just that one goal in the last four, 19 goal attempts, one goal, last four. So second on that list, for example, is, uh, say, Jimenez at Wolves. He's had 14 goal attempts and one goal. So that's the kind of that's the kind of thing you'd expect to see on goals imminent when you start getting up to 19 that starts to become you start thinking is there an issue now i think he's very very due he's overdue a goal but the slight worry i have is about two two or three years ago ibrahimovic was top of my goals imminent table at around this time that uh, of, of that season and he also had around 19 to 20 goal attempts which was also about five or six more than the next nearest on the goals imminent table and he was embarking on a huge goal drought. Um, so I have a slight worry there. So just to make uh, those who have gone without Salah feel better. But I think, I don't know. I think, I just think he's doing, he's had he's had four big chances. He's missed them all. Now, Ibrahimovic had many more big chances and missed many more. So he missed. So I, I just think that the underlying stats aren't quite at that Ibrahimovic level. Um, so anyway, that's yeah, a bit of something for the goals imminent fans there. But <laughs> any other Liverpool options? If, say, for example, someone's gone salah list, they've probably got Mane. Uh, is he a good option? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing with Liverpool just generally is... Um, there's a, there's a lot we don't know still. So, um, I mean, we can say all we like about Salah, but if he's not going to play against Southampton, then, you know, that kind of, you know, it creates a problem. And obviously, Sadio Mane is in that conversation as well. So, um, you know, he's he's performing a little bit below um, Salah now. So there was a time when they were kind of matching each other, but Mane, underlying numbers, is uh, he's, he's behind him on penalty box touches um, and chances created, but he's their level on shots on target. So there's still, you know, there's, there's still potential there I think for mine and again he's someone who I, I thought um, as an individual was unfortunate not to get some returns against Spurs uh, obviously the um, the Firmino goal had um, Batongan and uh, the post and Vaughan not got in the way then there's an assist so um, he's still um, you know still passing the eye test and, and looks very good uh, but yeah I guess it just comes down to any rotation I mean we've got this champ we've got a Champions League match uh, in the week, which could change a lot because um, the the lineup might indicate something. You know, if one of Viva Salah or Mane isn't started, then we know that they're more likely to start the weekend. Alternatively, one of them could get injured, or if they both play, then and then Klopp is cryptic later in the week. Then we have a bit more of a problem, really, because he has hinted at rotation, um, but we just don't really know what that's going to look like yet because he hasn't really done it on a big scale yet, has he? Like, it's mostly just been in the centre of midfield with say Henderson and um, and Keita that seem to be rotating. So. For, for me, it's like I feel like I need more from Klopp and I need to watch Liverpool in the Champions League before I really kind of work out who's better out of Salah or Mane because we don't know if they're on the same level in Klopp's mind in terms of like rotation or if they're on different levels. Like, does he see Salah as more important than Mane? Does he see him as the same? They're all sort of questions I need an answer to, really. And also the Southampton there. Um, now, we have a good chance um, earlier this week tonight, in fact, to watch uh, Southampton in action, their defence. Um, they're actually doing pretty well. They've got a couple of clean sheets. Um, and McCarthy's doing really well uh, for saves as well. Um, so if Salah is missing those chances, 
Um, McCarthy's the kind of goalkeeper that can that can handle that. And he said that, yeah, I mean, on paper, that just looks looks great, really, even though Salah did disappoint game week five. Now, some one player that didn't disappoint game week five, boy, did he not disappoint. It, it was Eden Hazard. A hat-trick there, 20 points. Those that got him in and captained him, well done. You got 40 points. Incredible. Now, he's got another favourable fixture coming up. Um, so he played Cardiff, and now he's got West Ham. Um, so, yeah, Eden Hazard I mean, sounds like a great captaincy option. Yeah, I think um, when we look at all of the options we're going to look at today, obviously we've just looked at Liverpool, we're going to look at Man City later. Um, obviously, he scored his hat-trick, which obviously is you know going to turn a lot ahead. But for me, I think his biggest advantage is just sh- like the, the sureness of, of a start, in my opinion, because um, with um, the Europa League, I don't know, I feel like he could he could not play that and I don't really think that Chelsea would struggle. Um, I just I get the impression that he is more kind of nailed on to play next week than Salah is and possibly Aguero as well. So that for me is the biggest advantage because he just, some of the quotes that came out of um, uh, Sarri after the game talking about how, and has he said this a few times this season, he's just really durable. Um, you know, he, he, he gets knocked down, he gets back up again. Um, and he sort of seems to have overcome a lot of his injuries. And I think, um, I just I got this. I just he's more likely to start those matches than than any other candidates. And then when you sort of delve into the numbers a little bit more, um, you know he's doing very well for touches in the box, for shots uh, in the box as well, um, based on how many minutes he's played. So he's he's behind all of the other guys, uh, but he obviously didn't start the first two games. Um, and obviously West Ham defensively not particularly great. The only thing that slightly worries me because I worry about everything <laughs> is um, West Ham. Hit, like recently kind of they'd like to up their game against uh, Chelsea I'd, I, I, I've i mentioned before how much of a troll Hazard is and I had him I think I signed him for that week when they when they went to West Ham last season um, expecting a big big win as most people were and then West Ham won I think 1-0 with an Arnautovic goal so you know that's always going to that's always going to haunt me in particular and maybe a few others um, but yeah I mean that display against Cardiff was just great and he's on penalties as well there's just there's not really a lot not going for Hazard individually as a player yeah I mean I, I think with with Hazard I, I it's hard to say you're guaranteed points I think you're guaranteed points though with Hazard <laughs> against West Ham I think you guarantee he's going to play the way that Sarri's talking about and the way he's talking about what the goals he wants to score I think he's just having one of those seasons he mm. has them um, you know every two or three seasons he's he's whoom. He's, he's absolutely incredible um, unstoppable really um, and I, I just think, yeah, I, I think the the big question really for those that have Hazard and Salah really is obviously which one's going to score more. I think mm. on paper, both should score well. It's just looking at things like those underlying stats with Salah, the fact that he's just, we know what he can do. And I think that's, for me, that might persuade me a little bit more to Salah. I do have Hazard now. I'm thinking, I am seriously thinking of Hazard for the captaincy. And as you said, it's that security of starts, really. Yeah, that's uh, the key. Yeah, I really, I, I know he's going to start. And he's, he's looking like the Sarri's rotating William and Pedro. There's various other rotation there. But Hazard's just his man. It's the talisman theory, again. But it's talisman on a big scale because he's a big price player and he's getting big hauls there. So... Yeah, so I mean, here's another player. Now, it's someone I've been talking about a lot on the scout cast. He once again he delivered again in game week five. It's it's Romelu Lukaku. Now he's got a great fixture. Well, we think it's a good fixture. Uh, home to Wolves. What what do we think of him? Good good shout for the captaincy. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, we, we we have been talking about him for about a week or so now, haven't we? Because the numbers are very good. Um, we predicted that he he score in game week five, and he did. Um, so yeah, I think if you if you've got Lukaku, you can you can still look to him. He's uh, level with uh, Salah for shots on target. So if we're bigging up Salah's shots on target, then we should big up Lukaku's as well. Um, yeah, um, Wolves is I think a harder fixture uh, than Watford because they've been defensively a bit better. But I mean, it is away from home, and I think that Wolves are going to be one of these teams that are slightly uh, a different prospect away from home. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to. I mean, I should always say I'm probably not going to go. I'm not necessarily going to go out and get Lukaku. Uh, because it's difficult to find room with Aguero knocking about still, um, but yeah, if you, I mean, if you've got him, then you, you if you're putting that much money into Lukaku because you think he's going to do well, then you've got to at least consider him for the captaincy because of the numbers that he's posting underline. I mean, the thing I noticed about the Wolves' defence as well, is 
lots of people, you'd be, be a fool not to notice it really, is their attacking attempt, particularly from the full-backs, but also from their centre-backs as well. Uh, Bolly, a, a player that I fi- finally got in my team, finally got his points this week. And, um, you know, he was getting that bonus, but he also he just looked threatening at set pieces. Um, I've got a feeling Wolves are going to score. I've got a feeling one of their defenders is going to score, or at least get, get attacking returns there but defensively as you say away from home against Manchester United who are doing really well for attacking they've had a, a lot of negative press but they're still coming up with the goals and Lukaku's still coming up with it so yeah I agree I think I think they're pretty good really um, now um, I mean looking at the fixtures we're looking at um, uh, for game week six Man City once again they're continuing that fine run of games um, now Aguero is a slight injury risk at, at, at the time we're, we're recording this video um, uh, which obviously those that own him hope he's doing all right so Man City against Cardiff that looks a great fixture for uh, potentially for Aguero if he's fit but but maybe some other City assets as well what, what, what's your take on that yeah, it's um, it's a tricky one because yeah, the fixture does look great. If Chelsea can smash Cardiff four one, then Man City absolutely can too. Um, obviously, it's uh, it's it's at Cardiff, so I, I expect them to to be a bit better than they uh, they were at, at Stamford Bridge. But yeah, I th- it, it kind of goes back to the whole rotation idea. Like, we, I think this week is 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 going to change a lot. You know, we, now that the Champions League is back, it completely changes the way that we think about um, a lot of our decisions. So because we've, we've got another game to go and we don't know what... I mean, even if Aguero was fit right now, I wouldn't be certain um, because if he... I mean, if he if he starts um, in the Champions League and plays the whole game and uh, Guardiola brings Jesus off after 60 minutes, then you start to think, well, hold on a minute, Aguero's not looking that short to start. Um, so, I mean, I mean, you're, you're obviously wild carding this week. I'm certainly thinking about it after a poor week. Um, you know, Aguero is one of those players where... If we start to get an indication that he's not like the main man for the Premier League anymore, then do we look elsewhere? I mean, alternatively, it could work it out even better. I, I mean, Jesus um, didn't start this uh, this most recent game, having started the two home games previous to that, which to me suggests he's definitely going to start midweek, and that that might have been without Aguero's injury. That might have been the plan, um, you know, to, to start Jesus, not Aguero, anyway. Yeah, I mean, you look at Aguero's numbers, they're still great. So, you know, if he's going to start, then definitely got to consider him for the captaincy against the newly promoted side. But it's just, there's so many unknown factors about the rotation once the Champions League gets going. Um, yes, Aguero started all the games so far, but that's probably without Champions League in mind. So it's just that's at the back of my mind with Aguero. Yeah. I mean, I, I, what I think with Aguero is is at home, I have no problems captaining him. Captain him this week, yes, obviously he didn't get the same level of returns as, as, as Hazard. But he got returns, and in fact, you know, he's had two two assists, three goals. I just think at home, he's 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 a sure thing. Away, I'm not quite so sure. They do seem to play slightly differently. Man City mm-hmm. don't seem to be the force they are at home. But nevertheless, Cardiff. To be fair to Cardiff again, they're pretty woeful, um, and so I just think there's going to be goals there from Man City. Depends with and a, a player I'm looking at is Dav- David Silva. Um, now he. Um, was top of my assist imminent table still is really because he still is searching for that assist but he scored that goal at the weekend so he showed his his uh, scoring intent there but looking at the number of, of chances he's created so last four matches he's created 16 um, chances which is you know that's that's huge so Aguero is behind just behind him with 10 actually so that's the next nearest so Aguero is doing really well for creativity for a striker but David Silva's out on his own there so with six no assists and 16 chances created. That says he's going to be assisting some point soon. And I think it's going to be against Cardiff. Um, now, what about elsewhere? Um, I mean, we've mentioned some real big hitters there. Pretty much most people are going to be looking at one of the players that we've mentioned, we think. Um, but there's some good differential options, and particularly amongst the talisman for other sides. Uh, who, who should people be thinking of there for a bit of a differential? Well, um, top of uh, shots on target right now is uh, is, is Mitrovic. Um and a much easier fixture this week at home against Watford than away against Man City. Um, I, I, some people might have been put off by just how ineffectual he was against Man City, but I, I think you got to lay a lot of that at, at the manager. I thought that was a really weird performance from Fulham. It was kind of like, we know they're going to win, so if we don't try, it won't feel so good for them that they won. Just, that was kind of like the, the, the way that game panned out. But 
you know, I just you can't really assess Fulham off that particular game no. because I think they're going to go to Watford with the intent to get three points. I also think that what happened with Seri there, so Seri was you know culpable for for the first goal, um, and his his head just dropped, um, and he is he you know he's a great asset there for I mean. I mean, I'm trying not to be offensive to Fulham here because Fulham are great. I really enjoy watching them and everyone's favourite second team and all that. But Seri strikes me usually as a player that is perhaps too good for Fulham. Um, I was quite surprised he didn't go to a, lot, a bigger club. But then perhaps at Man City, we saw why um, his head dropped. And, and it, I think that affected a lot of the other team as well. So you didn't quite get that same level of tackling and passing and control um, that he offers. So yeah, the idea is that Seri's going to have to up his game there against Watford and that's going to allow Mitrovic to shine which is what he's been doing and he's such accuracy and um, you know he's a real he's a beast this season um, at, by far I think the top top target amongst those kind of cheap to mid-price uh, strikers but yeah what about other talisman as well now, now Palace has got their, their talisman home to Newcastle that looks good for Zaha yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's got to be the key with these differential characters. They've got to be people who are sort of nailed on the key for their team. And um, yeah, so um, Zaha's definitely one to look at. I um, I think the Palace just looks so much better when he's in the team. Uh, you know, they were kind of back to what we expected of them pre-season. We, I mean, I personally talked them out quite a lot pre-season. With Tompkins back in the team and Zaha back in the team, they're definitely um, worth looking at now. Um, one person who, I mean, I know we've already sort of talked about how we think United are going to win but um, Ra- uh, Raul uh, Jimenez uh, was uh, top for shots on goal um, in, in, in game week five um, so I mean if you're thinking you're feeling really bold you know potential captain I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying captain but it's just it's always worth pointing out when someone like him is top for shots within a game week because of his value in you know, 5.5 so um, you know there's and, and Callum Wilson we've also talked about as well um, another talismanic figure for, for that team is for, he's just He's he's in the box a lot. He's shooting a lot. He's he's kind of just doing everything you want uh, from a striker, and he's he's clearly the and he's by far and away the the best at that at his team. And Burnley uh, don't look particularly good right now. I, I I mean, obviously European football's hurt them a little bit. Um, so I mean, I don't really know what's exactly going wrong there. I don't even think necessarily that Sean Dyche does. Um, but Bournemouth on the on the opposite are in, in great form. That just feels like a game where Wilson's going to go there and um, do some damage. And Fraser as well could be another option. Um, very yeah, popular sure, yeah. this week, especially after his, his brace. I think I think with Burnley, just just to finish off really with them, one of the weirdest things about them is that Joe Hart's suddenly become really good. Um, and <laughs> um, I, I was there was a stat just before um, on the, the game at the weekend. Um, that Joe Hart had made more saves than any other goalkeeper in top flight European football this season, um, which was wow. incredible, I thought. Um, and uh, yeah, what I, about Fabianski? <laughs> no, he's even better than Fabianski this season in the Premier League. So, yeah, it's, it's quite something really there. So, he's gonna have to be real top quality Joe Hart, um, if that's possible, uh, against Bournemouth because as you <laughs> said, they're very attacking, lots of options. But, um, for now, thanks so much, David, uh, and good luck in the game week. Yep, and to you.